uh, my name is Heikki Lindegangas. Nowadays I work for Pivotal. Uh, we're working on open source and cream plum, if anyone hasn't heard yet. Um, but today, what I'm today going to talk about is, is something I've been hacking on for 9.5. Um, this presentation, I'm going to talk about some improvements that we did in 9.5 and some changes that are hopefully improvements in 9.5. Uh, this is about this is all about the building tools and the server side behavior that we have in Postgres. I'm not going to cover anything about Rep Manager, Wall E, PC Backrest, all of these other tools. Uh, I'm also not going to cover how to do monitoring or heartbeats, anything like that. Those are all very important things. You need those. Uh, but I'm not going to cover those important parts today. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to talk about the Postgres internals. Uh, I've split this presentation into a few parts that are kind of loosely coupled. Uh, I'm going to present some problems that we have had in previous re releases. Then I'm going to explain how you can now work around them or how they have been fixed in 9.5. So let's get started. Part one, continuous archiving. How many of you use continuous archiving? How many of you have set up while archive? And so, yeah, quite a few. So there are a few gotchas that you might not be aware of. The simple procedure how you set up a while archive is you set up while level to archive, then you set archive mode to on, and then you specify the archive command. And this is where it gets com more complicated. What do you put in your archive command? Stephen. PG backrest. That is a good answer. <laughs> Let's see if PG backrest does what I'm going to talk about and if it actually does that correctly. We'll come back to that. Um, so when you set up a while archive, the Postgres user manual says that it's very flexible. You know, the archive command might store the data, might copy it over SSH. It might, you might use something like PG backrest, and I don't know what the hell that does. Maybe it uses SSH to copy it somewhere else, or I don't actually know. Does anyone know? I, okay. Yeah, OK. You, you know, well, you can set it up multiple different ways, right? You can set it up to copy to a local directory and then asynchronously. OK. There you go. Uh, you know, send it off, or you can just send it off directly from underneath the archive command. Cool. Personally, I like the asynchronous mode because we generate, I mean, we had times when we were generating over a terabyte of wall in like an hour. So, you know, it, 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 so. That makes sense. So you copy it to the local directory first. Yeah, that makes sense. So. Make sure you sync that, but yeah. Yes. <laughs> 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 so, you can copy it everywhere, burn it on a CD, and whatnot, but. What their manual says that you have to make sure is that it returns zero if it succeeds, and it must not return zero if it does not succeed. Another important point that the manual makes is that it must not, re it should refuse to overwrite any existing files. It's a pretty important safeguard. Uh, I think things will work if you don't do that, if you will overwrite existing files, but it just sounds very dangerous. So, you know, it's a good safety measure not to. Um, Postgres should work if you do, but as long as it's from the same cluster. Yeah, it's easy to that, get it's yeah, it's very easy to get confused if you have multiple clusters, you point in the same directory and oops. Uh, yeah. But assuming you do everything correctly, this isn't you know, Postgres doesn't require that for correctness that you refuse to override files. But it's just a very good administration um, practice. As the manual says, if you make an administrator error, it will protect you from that. So then the manual goes on and gives this example, which is like you just use the copy command. Uh, and it even says that it's, a recommend it's, it's an example, not a recommendation. Because uh, it might not work on all platforms, depending on what these functions do. Work on any? Uh, I think it works. But does it work correctly on any? I don't know. I don't think so. Sometimes. <laughs> So yeah, here's the first gotcha you got there. Uh, CP won't do F-sync. Uh, so if you use this example command, just copy it to a local directory, or if you write your own tool that just copies it to a local directory, there is no guarantee that when, when your program exits, it's really on disk. So it's possible that, it's entirely possible that right after your command has returned, Postgres decides, okay, this has been safely archived, I can delete it. And then you crash, and now you have the file deleted from Postgres side, but it's not actually stored on disk yet, so you lose the file. Now it's not as serious as it sounds because it's only the latest file you lose that way, or maybe if you 
latest. So it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world, but it's still pretty annoying. And it does mean that if you then continue running, you'll have a missing file in the middle of your archive, and then you can, you know, restore that backup any further than that. So yeah, it's annoying. And it, I said I want to talk about monitoring tools, but that is one very good test that your monitoring tools should be checking. Do you have all the wild files? They are sequentially numbered, so I recommend that you, every now and then, you know, pull your archive and make sure that you have all the files in there. Because who knows, you might have problems like this or something else that makes one file to go missing. And if you're missing a file in the middle, all the rest of the files that you have after that are useless. So the second gotcha that comes, this arises from the fact that if you follow the good administration practice that you never overwrite an existing file, there is actually no guarantee that Postgres won't try to uh, archive the same file twice. Because it's entirely possible that after you've already archived the file, you crash. And the file was already archived, but Postgres didn't get the memo. It doesn't know that it was safely archived, so after you restart, it will try to archive it again. Now, if you wrote your your archive command the way the manual says, it will throw an error because it's already there and now your archiving is failing. Hopefully, again, you have these cool monitoring tools that will detect that and then you'll go and fix it. Uh, but it's something that can happen. So, yeah. Would you, I mean, in that specific case, would you consider just comparing the two files and if they're identical, then it's okay? It yes. I would recommend exactly that. <laughs> you should compare the old and the new file, and if they are byte-to-byte -byte identical, return success instead. Okay, yeah. uh, so, because if, if you try to archive the same file twice, the, you know, there's no point in archiving the same file twice. So, I would recommend writing your archive command if you're writing something like PG backrest or something complicated tool. Uh, it's worthwhile to do this check, I think. So. How to write a robust archive command? Only returns their own success, as the manual says. As the manual also says, refuse to overwrite an existing file unless it's identical to the one that, that exists. In that case, return success. And if you're writing to a local disk, always use fsync to make sure it actually hits the disk. If you're copying it somewhere else, then I guess it depends whether you want to, I mean, is it enough that you SSH copy it over to another server? Maybe you trust that it won't crash at the same time. I don't know, but I would, yeah, I, it's, yeah, still have sync. Why not? Yes, that's true. That's true. So if you just Copy write it, if you, and then move it into place. yeah, actually that's a good point. I should have added that there. Yeah. So also make sure that you're, you know, copying the file in place is atomic. Like use something like temporary file name, yep. fsync, then rename it in place. And do you have the fsync after that too? Yeah. Yeah, you should. Yeah. You should. <laughs> <laughs> because again, why not? <laughs> More fsync is always better. <laughs> Until it becomes slow. Uh, so the, I think the manual, it's, it makes it look deceptively easy to write the robust archive command, because it's not actually that easy. So we should do something like pg archive command that you know, gets these things right. Or maybe not, maybe we trust pg backrest and barman. And, well, the, there's a lot of these tools that you know, plug into archive command and hopefully get this right. Um, while writing this presentation, it occurred to me that we should you know, maybe add these things to the documentation as well. Which we, which we should. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, the part two of my presentation. I'm going to talk about a new feature in 9.5. Uh, it's called Archive Mode Always. So, in previous releases, you could set Archive Mode to on or off. And now there's a third option. It's like a three-state Boolean. It's off or on or always on, which means that it's also on in a standby server. So in previous releases, if you set archive mode on and you have a streaming replication running or just pointing time recovery or any kind of recovery <coughs> system, it's only the master that's generating the while that does the archiving. 
But if you set archive mode to on, also the standby server, or if you're doing continue, uh, point in time recovery, then also the recovery server will try to archive your or, or everything that it has already restored. And the uh, kind of the use case for this is if you have if you want to have this setup where you have a master and a standby, and you want them both to have a separate wall archive, you don't want to share it. Uh, that's the scenario where you want to set archive mode to always. It makes sense if you have, you know, if they're in different data centers or whatnot. Uh, it's definitely something you, you should be doing. But it was not really possible in previous releases to set up archive command that way. Now it is. So I'm going to leave that for a moment. Archive mode always, it lets you do this separate archive thing. There's more things you can, more tricks you can do with that, and I'm going to get back to that later. So the part three is how do you set up a continuous archiving with a shared archive? So the previous slide was about having separate archives for the master and the standby, but this is probably more common, I think. Uh, people only want to have one while archive if they're all in the same data center or whatnot. And they only want to archive these files once. They want to keep a separate archive for every standby. So how do you do this? How many of people are actually trying to do this today? Hands up? Uh, there's a few. Yeah, there you go. Let's see if you got this right. Uh, so the naive approach is to set archive mode to on and then put the same archive command on both of your servers. And it's not quite good enough. I'm going to explain why. So let's see what happens when you promote your standby server. Okay. So the meteor hits your master server. Hopefully your wall archive was not on the same server as the master, because <laughs> then you're screwed. Uh, so you had your archive somewhere else and it's safe and you have your standby. You promote that to become the new master. At this point, the standby server will first of all, it will replay all the while it had already streamed from the master. Then it's going to create a new timeline. How many of you know what the timeline is? OK, good. Hopefully everyone who raised hands before will also know what the timeline is. Uh, then what it's going to do next, the, the new timeline means that it's going to bump the number in the while files it generates so that they don't clash with the ones generated in the first server. So you get kind of two sets of while going forward. Anyway, what it's going to do next, it's going to copy the last segment it was writing to or recovering and rename it on the new timeline and continue going from there. And then it's going to restart the archiving because you had archive mode set on. So you have this, this situation. You have your master server and you have these three wild files there. You have the standby server and you have, you have had streaming replication set up and you've streamed all of these three files to the standby. And you also have the wall archive. The master have called archive command for all of these three files, and they're all on the archive. So they're all in sync. Oops. Uh, now, as time goes on, the master will, there's more activity in the master. It will generate more wall. So you see a few extra files there, and they get also get streamed to the standby. And you're always going to have this one last segment that isn't full yet. It's currently writing to that file. So whenever you, you insert something, it goes to that last file that's still active. And if you stream a replication, your standby is also keeping that file in sync. It might be lacking behind, but the point is that it's also writing this partial file that isn't full yet. And Postgres won't try to archive that file until it becomes full, because you don't want these you know, half full files in your archive. Um, so what's now going to happen when you crash and you promote your server? In 9.4 and below, what will happen is that the standby will first of all archive this partial file. And it's going to have a name that looks just like any other file, which is pretty confusing because you don't know it's a partial one. And I'm going to do a little detour on this. So you have, in 9.4 and below, you have this segment in the wall archive Let's go back to the previous one. You have this segment in the wall archive that I've circled that looks just like any other wall file in the archive, but it's not actually complete yet. It's only half of it contains garbage. Um, 
it's not a problem on its own, but it, it's very confusing. If an administrator looks at that, oh, how do you tell that it's not a complete file? Yes? Uh, you can look in the wall, right? It's not uh, indistinguishable. If you right? try to open that in Notepad, you know, or <laughs> you can try to open it in Notepad and see if you see it or first. Or you have a tool that actually <laughs> yeah, there's a tool. There's a tool. <laughs> yeah, there's the tool. Uh, Xlook dump, that's it. <laughs> so you can run that, but from the Xlook dump output. No, I mean your backup tool can do it. Oh, your backup tool can do it. How? Just wall format, you can read the wall format. Okay, so is there any backup tools that can do that today out there? There's one that has a feature plan to do exactly that. <laughs> okay, so there's a planned feature to do that. <laughs> okay, that's good, that's yeah. good. That's actually a very nice feature. Yeah. Mm. It would be nice to run that feature on all your wild files to make sure that they are all complete. Oh, and uh, maybe yeah. check the CRCs while you're at it? Yes, that would also be nice. Yeah. Anyway, you can do that too. Well, while waiting for that <laughs> tool uh, <laughs> to appear, uh, <laughs> there is no way really easily to tell that it's, it's a partial segment. You could use PGXLock dump, uh, but again, re reading the output of that to determine that it's full, it's not trivial. I could probably do it, but. No, yeah. <laughs> so there are some problems with this. Uh, if the master actually continues running, it's if, if it wasn't the meteor that struck it, but it's still running, it might later try to archive the same file after it's actually complete. Mm -hmm. But now you have this partial file with the same name in the archive, and you're trying to overwrite it with the complete one, your archive command will fail, and now you never get the complete segment archived. You might not care because you already fa failed over to the standby. Maybe you just want to throw it away. But then again, you usually don't want to lose like valid transactions if you ever might want to go back and look at it. Uh, so the second problem is that what might also happen is that the master actually had already archived it before you failed over, but the standby was lacking behind. So now what will happen is that the standby after the failover, the, the new master will try to archive the partial segment with the same name and that will fail. And now it's going to keep failing and failing and your new master will never make any progress with its archiving and it's going to get stuck. Now an administrator has to go and fix it. And the administrator is going to be awfully con confused because there is the same file with the same name. Yes. Mm. which is kind of a problem with the same archive. Yeah, and one way to avoid this is to actually use like a different directory for the master and the standby so that even though it's kind of the same archive, but you can then have both copies of the files. Uh, but again, then the restore command gets more complicated and it's, it's really not ideal. So this has been changed in 9.5. Uh, whenever the standby now archives this partial segment that is not complete, it will add the, it will rename the file to dot .parcel. So in 9.5, if you do failovers, you will start to see these dot .parcel files in your archive. Don't be alarmed, that's perfectly normal. Usually you don't need to care about these partial files. Postgres doesn't care about them. Uh, if you copy them into pgxlog, Postgres will just ignore them unless you rename them, remove the suffix. Uh, so this is just for you know, emergency situations. The partial segment was always like that. It was never really needed for Postgres itself. But it's good to have it in case of emergency if, you, if the administrator has to go and you know, do something in, in panic. Um, so say that the master, say that the standby crashed immediately after the promotion uh -huh. and it didn't get around to archive the next segment yet. The, it's the, the new segment on the new timeline. Uh -huh. Then you might want to use this partial segment to recover up to the point just before the failover because there is no other copy of that while in that case, in the archive. Uh, but as soon as the standby you know, archives the first segment on the new timeline, you have it there as well, so you won't need it. But there are 
I don't really know whether that's going to happen, and I don't think anyone, you know, does this happen? I don't, I'm not sure. But it's there if you need it. Um, anyway, this is much better than the previous situation where you couldn't tell that it's a partial segment. So that was about the partial segments. Now let's get back to what happens at the promotion. So after the promotion has completed, you will have this situation. You have this master, in the master that crashed, you will have the segment with the, without the partial suffix. That's in the PGX log directory. You don't need to look at that. It was the file it was writing to. In the standby, it has been renamed to dot .partial. And it also gets archived by the standby as the dot .partial. And now the standby continues running. It generates these while segments. Uh, on the new timeline, you see the little number two there that indicates the timeline. And now everything is good, except if you look carefully at this situation, you will see that segments 18 and 19 were never archived. Uh, and that's bad. Because you now have this gap in your wall archive, and there is no way to get past that point if you try to do point in time recovery or anything. Now, this, you don't see this very often in production, but it can happen. If, for example, the master hadn't yet archived those 18 and 19 files, then they won't be there. They will never get there. Uh, usually, hopefully, your archive command keeps up, so it doesn't happen. But there's always going to be this small window where it can happen. And especially if, if your archive command is slow or something, it, it definitely can happen. And you're pretty badly screwed at that point. Because yeah, it can happen. And basically means that you can't restore from backup to any point after that, that promotion anymore. You know, the, the while that we archived, archived here on the second timeline is pretty much useless. Who knew that? Yeah, three people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is pretty shocking when I, I mean, I kind of knew this always. But when I really started to dig into this, it's pretty shocking that this happens. Because I mean, this is a pretty standard setup. You have the archive command set up the same in master and standby, and you kind of would expect this to work. So what are we going to do about this? Um, I, worked lo I worked for a while on this for the 9.5 release cycle. I was imagining an option called archive mode shared, where we would kind of try to detect the gaps and then try to archive them in the standby. Uh, ran out of time for 9.5. And I realized that actually the archive mode always, you can use that to work around this. It's a little bit complicated, but at least there is now, it's now at least possible to fix this. Um, so if you remember, with the archive mode always, the standby will also try to archive everything it receives. Now you can take advantage of that by um, having the same archive command in master and the standby, but you have to set them up so that they're now trying to kind of compete which one archives the file first. But you can now put in the logic there to check if the file already exists and then atomically move it in place if it doesn't. And if it's identical, then you, know, you can make it work. You want to make sure it's identical, really. You want to make sure it's identical. But you have to actually compare the files. Yes, you do. And, and it's, actually, you know, it's not easy to write this command because there's race conditions. You're suddenly going to have two servers trying to do the exact same thing at the same time, which you don't normally have with archive command. Uh, but it's theoretically possible to write that. I have not actually tried to write that command, but it should someone, not someone be possible. Be on that. that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now there's a way out. Maybe we should get back to having the real archive mode shared, where it will, you know, the system would take care of this in some other fashion. But now there's a workaround. So, summary on the shared archive problem: uh, you can work around. You, you can use archive mode always. Make sure your archive command is concurrency safe if you do that, and it handles duplicates, which means check that the files are identical and so forth. In 9.5, if you start to see these dot .partial files, uh, just ignore them until, if you don't know what you're doing, you can just ignore them. That's basically my advice. 
Uh, but it's good to have them. And still make sure your archive command calls fsync. More questions on this part? Yes. On NFS? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't, don't do NFS. Yeah, that's one solution. Don't use NFS. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Actually, uh, another way to set this thing up is it's not as performant, but you can just set up like two directories in your same, same archive and just always archive everything twice. It wastes space, but and it wastes network bandwidth to move the files, but you know, it might be acceptable. And it's a lot easier to set up that way. Yes? The Yeah, so the question was, what is the point of having a shared archive in the first place, if I get that right? Uh, yeah, so one motivation is to use, it, use the restore command and be able to restore the files to the standby from there. The other one is just to have a backup. Uh, yeah, the backup of the logs. And you, you'll need a base backup to go with it to have a full uh, backup with with the logs, which when you have the backup and the logs, then you can do point in time recovery to any point and all kinds of nice things. It's a, in a production system, you should always use continuous archiving, really. Uh, I guess the other side of that question is why do you want to use a shared archive and why not always use a non shared archive? Well, obviously, a shared archive uses less space for starters. So, again, one way to do this is to set archive mode to always and then accept the fact that everything gets archived twice but then if you care about the share the disk space you might want to have like a background process or a cron job or something that then hey, merges exactly. all the identical files or something no, like that some, some of the enterprise backup solutions will already deal with deduplicating for you so it, it actually it's transiting the traditional disk space but in your actual backup yeah, there is that as well. Yeah, so some systems might do deduplication for you, so you don't care. Yeah. You still have the network traffic to archive twice, but again, it might not be a problem. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, it does. Or it might have restored it from the archive already, which is kind of strange because then I'm going to try to re archive it again, but well, whatever. So if it got it from the streaming, there's no issue with one streaming? Oh, uh, yes, there is. Because uh, there is no guarantee that the master had already archived it. It might be streamed to the standby before it's archived in the master. Uh. So the next part. I'm just going to mention that there is actually a tool called PG Receive Xlog, which it you can do the same thing with PG Receive Xlog, and it's probably actually better. Uh, it's different from the archive command in that you it's a it's software that you install. Well, it comes with Postgres, but you have to install it in the archive server itself. It's a piece of software that runs not on your database server, but in the archive server. So you just can't, can't just use an SNF, N NFS mount or anything like that. You have to have a real server running there. Um, the way it works is that it connects to your server and it uses streaming replication to get all the data and then it will store them to files. And the end result is exactly the same that you get with archive command in, in that you get these files and it's gonna just write them to a directory, your archive directory. And the end result is going to look the same as with the archive command. Uh, it's better than setting up an archive command in that it's actually up to date. So archive command only archives full segments. So you're always going to lose the last 8 megabytes or 16 megabytes of data or of WAL whenever you crash because 
we always wait until the segment is full and then archive. But with uh, PG VCV Xlog, you don't have that problem. It's going to continuously stream over the changes, which is better. Uh, and PG VCV Xlog does add in 9.2. Since 9.3, it can follow timeline changes, which was pretty important for this failover scenario. Uh, it means that if the master crashes and PG VCV Xlog was connected to it, it will try to reconnect, and now it will hopefully connect to your new master. And it's going to notice that, OK, there was a timeline change. It's going to stream everything over, and uh, it's just going to work, basically. 9.4 made this reliable <laughs> in that we added these what we call replication slots. Uh, before 9.4, it was possible with PGVC Vexlog that uh, the master server already deletes the file before it has been streamed over with PGVC Vexlog. There was nothing to stop it from doing so. Uh, but in 9.4, you can set up a replication slot, slot to prevent that. And then it's really going to be reli a reliable replacement for, for setting up your archive command you know, file, for a file basis. Uh, this requires a little bit more monitoring, I think, because now you have to have this process running all the time in the archive server. So make sure it's running. And, you know. Or more than one of them running? Or more than one of them? In different servers, I guess. OK. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah, have a dozen of them running and see what happens. Oh, <laughs> if you really care about your well. Uh, 9.5 added an option called synchronous, which is so, uh, you know, if you use synchronous replication, you can now, or you can use synchronous replication now with PGVC XLog, which means that it's not going to acknowledge to the master that it has the data until it has F synced them to disk. Which means that you can set up your system so that uh, whenever you commit, the commit will wait until it's safely archived by PG Receive Xlog. Uh, I wouldn't normally recommend using synchronous replication at all, but that's a different topic. If you do, make sure you have more than one. If you do, make sure you have more than one. And if you think you do, you probably don't anyway. So, you know, think again. <laughs> Usually. There are scenarios, I admit that, but usually when people say they need synchronous replication, they don't. <laughs> so. It's worthwhile to say, though, that, the last, that it requires manual interaction because the last file by PG receive Xlog will have a dot partial or something. That's good, yes. So you will have to manually rename that or have your restore command check both variants. That's a good point. There, so there was some precedent to these dot parcel files. PG Xlog has always used the dot parcel suffix. So whenever it's streaming a file and it's not complete yet, it will use the dot parcel name for that segment. So when you restore from an archive created with PG Xlog, you will have this one dot parcel file at the end, and you'll want to rename that so that it gets restored. Or you have your restore command check for the partial files as well, uh, something like that. But yeah. Any more questions on this? Great. Use PG receive Xlog. It's easier to set up, probably. So the final part, a lot of people were guessing that I would be talking about PG Rewind today. I am, but not very much. Uh, so another new feature in 9.5 is this tool called PG Rewind. It's really cool. Uh, it's used for failback. So the, in previous versions, it's always been a problem. If you do the failover uh, to your standby server, now your standby server gets back up again. Maybe you upgraded the binaries or something. How do you fail back to that server? You know, reverse the roles of the servers again. And the old answer was that you have to throw away the master's data directory and restore from base backup. And that's pretty slow if you have like a 10 terabyte database. It's not really feasible in, in many cases. So there are tricks. You can use rsync to speed that up. Uh, rsync is nice, but it still has to read all the data, or you have to trust the timestamps, which you, you really shouldn't. Uh, so in practice, to make that safe, you have to read all the data. And again, if it's a 10 terabyte database, 
you not, might not have a lot of changes there, but if you even read through 10 terabytes of data, it's going to take a while. So in 9.5, there is this tool called PG Rewind, which solves this problem. Um, so let's go to this first. Uh, PG Rewind is a tool that replaces rsync for this particular scenario of doing a failback. It works pretty much like rsync, uh, except that when rsync tries to detect what files have changed and what parts of files have changed. It calculates these rolling checksums and reads through all of the, all of the data. Uh, PG Rewind uses the while for that because the write-ahead log already contains a, tr you know, a record for every modification we make to any pages. So we can just use that. So the way it works, it scans the while on the old server, that the one that, you're, that crashed and were failed over from. Uh, it scans the while there to, de to, to determine which blocks have been modified. And then it's going to copy over only the modified blocks. And for anything else than the actual tables and indexes, anything else than the actual data files, it's just going to copy everything. Uh, that includes any configuration files, any random readme files you drop in your data directory, anything. Uh, C log, multi XID, there's all kind of free space maps, there's all kinds of files that it doesn't handle, which means that it just copies them over completely. Because that's always safe. It's always safe to just copy over your data directory as it is, you know, obviously. You know, so that is the way we used to do. We used to just take a new base backup. Uh, but for the data files, which hopefully that's where most of your data is, you know, most of the volume <laughs> comes from, uh, except when you. Huh? Yes, I expect that. I heard someone, was it you who said that you did some testing with the multi XID box and generated four gigabytes of multi XIDs, but only had like 10 megabytes of data? <laughs> it was you. Yeah, there you go. So this tool is not for you. <laughs> um, so let's dig into this a little bit. So the problem at failback is basically that you have your old master and you might have some some commits there or some transactions there that were not streamed over before the failover happened. And those transactions are the problem. We're trying to get, when you do fail back, uh, your rsync command or pg rewind will erase those transactions and any modifications they made so that you can then get it in sync with the, the new master. Uh, there's a few points that are important to make here. Uh, some people try to use synchronous replication to avoid this problem. It will not help. Because even if you use synchronous replication, there is always going to be some well that has not yet been streamed to the standby, but has already been flushed to disk in the master. Uh, synchronous replication does not help with that. It makes the window smaller, but it's still there. There's always going to be, because synchronous replication only affects commits, there's always Auto vacuum running, there's always checkpoints running, they all write well, they all modify pages, and even your transactions, they do stuff before they commit, and they're not synchronous. You, we don't synchronously replicate every while record, it's only the commits. So again, synchronous replication doesn't help here. Um, yeah, any questions on this? It's a really nice tool. I hope people will try to test this and put it into action. The alpha release goes out hopefully next week or very soon anyway. Please try it. See if it works for you. And we still have the time to fix it before the release. Uh, it's been around for a while now, and people are starting to use it and haven't come up with anything major, but we'll see. Uh, uh, that is a good question. <laughs> That's kind of like... Yeah, I think that's equivalent to the halting problem or something. It's, yeah. You, I think you can, I mean, you can at least look at what the results of the systems are. You can compare, yeah, yeah. So yeah. after you run PG Rewind, which you ran because you wanted to avoid reading all your data, you should then run PG Dump on both servers and compare the <laughs> output <laughs> manually. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> And somebody might actually want to automate that test, and somebody might be working on doing that too. That would be great, yes. Uh, there are regression tests for PG Rewind. They are, you can run them. 
they are very useful. They don't test very much, but it kind of tried to capture all the different code paths and you know, usual, the usual stuff. Uh, but I haven't tried running it on pen terabyte databases myself. Um, I hope someone will try that. Yes, there is a version out there on GitHub. I originally wrote this when we were still on 9.3. There is a version on GitHub that, as far as I know, still works for 9.3 and 9.4. But there were some big changes in 9.5 that I made to the WALA format to make this more robust and more maintainable, really. If you're interested, you can look at the versions on GitHub for 9.3, 9.4. Again, they should work but I'm not spending any effort myself on that. I think Michael Pakir is still maintaining those. So if you report a bug, it will probably get fixed for 9.3 and 9.4 as well. Uh, but oh, I'm not, I don't really care about that anymore myself. Any more questions? Yes, Josh. Given how complicated the process of archiving correctly is, maybe we ought to have <laughs> at least for the case of a locally mounted directory. Yes. Somebody proposed a patch for that. It was called PT Copy or something like that. And I think it was an awfully good idea. For some reason, it got bogged, bogged down at inexplicable politicking. Um, but I yeah. think we should probably drag that patch out, fix whatever is wrong with it, and submit it. Uh, yeah. Mind you, PG receive xlog exists. Uh, that works, and it's pretty easy to set up. It's a different philosophy than setting up an archive command, and but it exists and it works. So uh, perhaps we should start to de-emphasize this archive command thing and you document it more as a thing. If you're writing, you know, you can plug into if you're writing something like PG backrest. Uh, although there's even with even if if you have a command like pg copy that does that correctly, you're still going to be missing like the last few megabytes of well, so it's not ideal even then. Uh, I don't know what the I don't know what the solution should be. Something like pg copy would be nice, but again, if you do that, then you kind of lose the flexibility. So it would have to be more like a example of that you can copy paste from. Yeah, yeah. No, I think we ag agree on that. Uh, the, and I, yeah, we probably should do something like PG copy. That's actually a good point. If you run it, if you run PG copy on the target and not on the server itself over SSH, then you can make it work even over SSH or something. But even then, it's kind of limited. And if you want, if you have to run something on the target server, then you might as well run PG receive xlog on the target well, server, maybe. Yeah, it's different.
Yeah. Well, I, uh, my point was just we can't get rid of archives from there, at least from, from my perspective. Well, that needs to I agree with that. Right. I, I mean, it's, it's horrible that we, we have uh, a, our documentation gives an example that has can fail in so many different ways. We, we need to have something that makes it easy to make it work. And you have to keep in mind that that receipt X log doesn't solve the problem for cases where, for example, you are required to route these uh, wall files to a file server where you can't run anything. Yes, that's You're true. Only well, mind you, might, you could run the RPG VCFX log somewhere else then. And actually, I wonder if you could run it on the server itself. It would be kind of weird. But you, you, you can. can. You can. There's a tutorial on uh, yeah, Monday or Tuesday, I think, that had us all set it up all on the same Oh, really? Yeah, you That's can cool. do it. Absolutely. Huh. OK. Yeah, so then you would just have PG VCFX log write it to your NFS mount or something. Kind of weird, but yeah, why not? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I guess if running it on the same server doesn't help with the failover scenario because, yeah, you still have all the same problems there with, you know. Yeah. So the question was what would be the right way to monitor PG receive X log? Um, so, yeah. Something like Stephen's tool that continuously pulls your archive. Make sure that there are new files arriving there every now and then. I would start with that. And it would also be good to actually read through the files and make sure that you don't have any gaps, missing segments, you know, and that the CRC is matched. That's, that would be pretty robust. Uh, there was a question? Yes, Josh. Yeah, um, one other thing that you can do, uh, which we actually ended up doing um, under 9.3 actually, is to put some more intelligence into the restore command. Mm -hmm. That is, you make the restore command actually a script that has intelligence about multiple archives. Um, yeah, that makes sense. You do end up archiving twice, but. Yeah, well, and, well you couldn't archive twice because it's 9.3, so only the master right. Yeah. And so what we did was we have each server archived to its own directory. Right. But then the restore command consults a list of what are valid directories. Yes, okay. And tries to build a continuous stream from it. That makes sense, but it does not solve the missing segments problem. So there's a gap there. No. Any more questions? I think we're over time. Uh, thank you.